Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and we're checking in on the color challenge and what we have is the color combination of Is It. And this is the deck that I used with Is It to get to seven wins in the constructed event. It is a Drake's list with Enigma Day Drake and Crackling Drake. It's a little bit, let's see, there's a few ways to build Drakes, right? You can throw all the Drakes in like uh, this version does and protect them with some cards like dive down and spell pierce the only new ish the only new 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 card here is a terramander four of them to provide even more big threats once we fill our graveyard so this deck doesn't use arc light phoenix which is a pretty different take on the deck and it also doesn't use niv mizzet which is another different take on the deck all different ways to play a bit of an is it drake build this one also doesn't use cheap 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 instants and sorceries to fill the yard like warlord's fury which can make your drakes bigger faster but aren't nearly as versatile or useful in most situations the way that entrancing melody spell pierce and dive down are so there are many different ways to build a deck like this i also have one murmuring mystic in the deck for the go wide versions and i have 21 land which many versions play 20 some play even less than that because they have so many ways to draw cards my version also doesn't play as many way to draw cards you'll see there's no discovery dispersal um we're really on chart of course and opt to draw the cards and the rest is about casting our spells we are a little more prone to flood than the typical version but our we have more removal options with Entrancing Melody and Lightning Strike to hang out with Shock and Lava Coil. So it's, an, it's just another take on almost the same thing. This version is designed to be a little stronger against red, white, and blue aggro decks because those decks are the ones that are most likely going to take advantage of you for casting a card like Tormenting Voice or Discovery Dispersal instead of affecting the board. Also, Go uh, Goblin Electromancer is another very popular card in the archetype when you're doing the Arc Light Phoenix thing, but it's not as good here, and it often just eats a shock, which is oh so popular in the meta, as you surely know by now. So, let's go see what size drakes we can make and play this deck. Okay, this is the kind of opener that against an aggro deck can be very good. We only need to draw a few drakes after playing these spells to have significant threats. Against a control deck, though, it's going to be ugly. I think we'll try it because aggro is a big part of the meta. And being on the play, I'm comfortable leading with my one is at Gilgate, and I am unlikely, I think, to run into anything I have to shock immediately. We have an Afghan war vet that we're playing against. We'll say hello. And there is a Siren Storm Tamer. So, interesting situation where I could shock it immediately, but I want to wait and see if my opponent goes for the curious obsession here. If they do and they protect the Storm Tamer, I could use Entrancing Melody on it, which could be pretty charming. Instead, here comes Beats, and we see Black Mana, which implies Thief of Sanity, I believe. And let's see what else our opponent plays. Nothing else. Interesting. So this could be a Wizard's Retort. Because of that, I'm going to use the Shock right now on the Siren Storm Tamer. And we'll see what the opponent does in response, if they let the Storm Tamer die, or if they protect it with a Dive Down, or play some kind of counter spell. And now we have a Drake. Do we run out our Drake? It would get through most counter magic right now, although not an essence uh, capture. The question is if we wait, who's favored? And it's so hard to tell right now. The blue black deck, I don't know much about it. It's hard to guess what they're going to play. So I think I'm going to deploy my threats and just try to get them moving. Dire Fleet Poisoner, okay. That has Death Touch and Flash, so blocking this is not an option. Well, it's an option. Let's, let's say it's not a good option. I think that's fair. Shock the Watery Grave. Curious Obsession the Poisoner. No blocks. That's not good. Curious Pirates it is. Engage off the top. Awkward. 
Awkward hand, awkward draw. One land would be so effective here. So the opponent leaving mana open means I think I want to try, I guess if they do run Wizard's Retort, but they're more likely to run the Lookout's Dispersal. Hmm. I feel like I should just go for a play now. Although this is a good time to try to set up the removal spell on their turn, removal spell on my turn. I can't get enough spells in the graveyard to make this a trade yet, so I may as well attack. And we'll pass to your turn, untap. Let's go for the lightning strike before our opponent sees their top card. There's the lookout's dispersal. I know it could have been one more damage if I used that on my turn, which is something I thought about, but using it on the opponent's turn forces them to use mana now and constrains their mana for the next turn when I untap and hopefully get to lava coil them. And even more hopefully, if I draw a land, I can lava coil with negate backup. I could also attempt to entrancing Melanie the Poisoner, which is a high reward play, but is a bit more risky than I want to do into open mana. Although with our opponent making that play, oh man. Oh wow, that's what we call an opportunity because they don't have the blue mana available. And let's get in there with the Enigma Drake so that the Curious Obsession does not fall off. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack this turn, sacrifice the Obsession. I believe that it still applies to this player, not me. Maybe I'm wrong about that. We'll find out. If the Styron Storm Tamer doesn't attack here, well, never mind. There's another Curious Obsession. So uh, rulings like this are complicated about which player we're talking about needs to attack to keep the obsession from falling off. If you know the exact ruling, go ahead and post in chat. I think I know, but I could be wrong. Let's, let's start a fight over the Storm Tamer now so that we have more uh, spells in the graveyard for the Enigma Drake. Especially when there's a fight, I'm sure I can win. It would be much more questionable if I wasn't sure if my spell would resolve whether or not to make that play. And the opponent scoops it up. Early removal counters a little bit of card selection. Pretty much what we're looking for. Play, being able to play the shock on turn one would be nice. Uh, Mickey with the mulligan. Probably thinking it over, but we'll say hello. They scry to the top, so it should be a competitive matchup. And we're going to start with, yep, Spear Spear. The red deck is here. I do feel like my deck's built pretty well against them, as long as we can slow down the onslaught and put a clock on them before Risk Factor becomes too nasty. Light up the stage getting spell pierced feels good. Let's see if there's another land in this hand. There is. Is there another play? We are in an event. Wow. I guess that's one way to tilt a red deck. Okay. More of the same. Looks pretty good. I'll probably shock turn one to get opt or shock cast. And by shock turn one, I mean shock myself uh, by paying two life. The shock lands, they call them that because it's like you do two damage to yourself. Tide Taker. We have to opt in response or the ability won't let us uh, cast it. So white is a really tough matchup. The good news is we have the Murmuring Mystic in hand, which is one of the best things we can have. I'm going to bottom the Gill Gate because we have a good curve otherwise. So am I going to chart a course here? I could shock away the Tide Taker. Which messes with me a little bit, but doesn't, not necessarily. I think I'm best off shocking the Tithe Taker, which doesn't have great targets otherwise, especially when the opponent didn't play something turn one. So yeah, I think I want to play this tap, shock the Tithe Taker, then play a Drake, then play a Mystic, then play both Charter Courses. So we've got our turns planned out. Let's see how strong the opponent can present their battlefield in the time there. Since they didn't have a one drop, I'm very scared of History of Benalia, Ben Elish Marshall. 
And here comes the Drake. I don't think the Terramander changes the play. We don't want to chart a course now. We want to do it after we murmur. So it could also be a venerated Loxodon time, but here's a Benalia. Ouch. So this is a really big turn. If our opponent has a Conclave Tribunal, they're in a pretty good spot. If they don't, we are in a pretty good spot. However, I don't think there's time to wait. I don't think I can kick back and hope they don't have it or try to set it up so I can play this with a dive down or spell pierce. And there is the Loxy. Well, what can you do? What can you do but die? Die a miserable death. So I don't have anything to come back from this point. Hmm. And we lost our one card that can kind of fight the fight because our opponent's draw was beyond perfect. It was very next level. So I guess we can send out a Terramander and a Terramander and scoop this one up. Ouch. Well, the early removal spell is a card draw spell. Hope for the best, right? I'm a little I'm a little shattered by that absolute steamrolling I just received. I guess I'll play this tapped because we might draw steam vents that we want to play tapped and shock at the same time. It's possible. Alright. I'm going to hang on to the chart, of course, at least for a moment. With an opt to play instead. I like to try to play this for cards with this version of the deck. And here is Goblin Instigator. Let's try to find a, a creature. Negate. Do I want to shock one of these? Mm. It does half the effectiveness of the instigator itself. And our spells are kind of here to be put in the graveyard and make our other threats better. So I feel like we should make the play. Should I hold up the negate though, or the chart of course? I think I can wait another turn and at least see what my opponent's up to. Maybe they'll give me something worth negating. Maybe not. Maybe they'll give me something to lightning strike. This feels like it might be the Legion War boss is the main card on my mind because they showed Goblin Instigator. Those cards kind of live together in my mind as things players might put in the same deck. And a skewer the critics to my face. Well, again, I could play the negate. I really don't know enough about what my opponent's doing, but they might be an Experimental Frenzy deck. There's a few things they might have going, and I think it makes sense to just take that hit. Ooh. All right. I think I try the creature. If the opponent doesn't kill it immediately, negate plus chart, of course, is such a good follow-up. I think we go for it. I wish I could wait for one more mana. I'm just not sure what's up. And there's an arc like Phoenix, so that's good. That is a lava coil target is what that is. Now, when to hold up negate is going to be interesting. I think I can... Hmm. Let me attack with the... I know I want to exile this, right? So I could do that and then attack with the drake and then chart and take negate down. Or I could just hold chart for the future. Which I think holding chart for the future is fine. And then I'll play this land tapped. And now we have Negate to try to protect our Enigma Drake, as riding it to victory is sort of the big plan. Our opponent has their own Enigma Drake, but it's only a 1-4 at this point. Oh, what are you doing? Maximize Velocity, okay. It's a very aggressive take. Negating that doesn't make sense to me. And the opponent's trying to get really frisky. All right, my turn. Another land off the top. Let's attack in with the Drake and draw some cards. 14 to 12. Scary for sure. It's getting scarier, to be honest. So how many spells in the graveyard? Four. I can't flip the Terramander this turn, but we can get it onto the battlefield. And we can play a Steam Vent tapped.
That's pretty nasty. And not a lot I can do about it either. I can lightning strike something, but what? I'm probably better off... So what I need to do is top deck an entrancing melody. If I do that, I want the lightning strike. Well, regardless, I need to get this to a 5 and this to a 5 to at least spar with Niv, so I'm going to send this to the face. In response, before the opponent would draw a card from it. And I hope that they just get really aggressive here. Because that would allow me to turn around and attack for potential lethal. Which would force Niv to trade. Now the goblin can attack, it can't block anyway. Not a good draw. So we make this big and we swing for the fences and try to get the opponent to trade away their Niv. Pretty rough draw, tipping both the negates and not having a good use for them. The only thing I could have negated was maximize velocity or skewer. I don't think negating either of those would have been right. Oh wow, the opponent with a bad block there on the Terramander in my opinion. But they're going to try to kill me and it doesn't take much. Ouch. Okay, they're going to try to velocity that, which will put me at seven. Then this is six, it's lethal. It's lethal by exactly one, so that Pyromancer was the perfect draw. I guess we can hope that they mess it up. That's the only thing I can really do. But they just have to target correctly with Niv and attack, and they're good. Okay, whatever, dude. Uh, just now, they have to do some showboating. Nothing wrong with making sure, I suppose. Ooh, not a capable hand. Not even close. First Crackling Drake we've drawn in four games, five games? Crazy. But that is a keepable hand, and it doesn't need more land than that. Opponent's going to open with an opt, something that the Drake deck knows the joy of as well. And here's the Terramander. Terra, Terra, Terra. This Cloaked Herald is here. I wonder if I'm supposed to hold up the shocks for that or play the chart, of course. Anyway, the opponent's stalling on something. I guess it's another opt. I think I hold the shocks for the chart, of course. Or not the chart, of course, the Curious Obsession, and I get the chart, of course, cast this turn. Try to work on getting this Terramander buff as soon as possible. Drawing five lands is not good. You'd think with 21 lands, you draw a land in every three cards, but here we are with 21 lands. We have seen 10 cards, five of them being land. It does happen some amount of the time, but it's not what you'd call good luck. And then the scale tips, and we've drawn even more lands than spells. Very rough. So I want to make sure my Drake resolves. I also want to fight Curious Obsession at every turn, so I don't think I'm attacking here. I think I'm letting the opponent go. And then I want to fight with these shocks on my opponent's turn. Giving up a point of damage is worth it to me to start a fight on the opponent's turn, not mine. So that Crackling Drake is more likely to happen. Tempest Jin. How fun. So I can't remove that right now. Opponent goes in with the Herald. Let's try zapping the Herald and see if the opponent tries to protect it with the Storm Tamer or a Dive Down. Okay, resolves. All right, let's also go after the Storm Tamer. Got that one too. Now let's play our Crackling Drake to face off with this Tempest Jin. 
And hopefully it will draw us a non-land card. Hmm. Getting grouchy over here. However, we are getting to the point where the Terra Mender could be a 5-5 very soon. So the opponent definitely has a good attack with the Jin here. And they get to protect it. So we need to face it on the battlefield. By making our Terramander huge, by getting more spells in our graveyard for our Drake. Of course, we're not going to be able to do that the way this is going. But I can... Hmm. When to buff the Terramander? I guess I have to be aware of like a Merfolk Trickster. I'm not going to block with this Crackling Drake, so I may as well get in there. All right, let's end the turn and see what the opponent does. Nothing. It's probably not a Merfolk Trickster then. A second Tempest Shin is pretty scary. So this is where a dive down is of huge concern. And I should have probably have just held back the Crackling Drake for a double block if I'm concerned about dive down. But if I make this block, maybe I can resolve the Enigma Drake. And I guess the upside's pretty high if the opponent doesn't have it. But we've got to get through it one way or another, whether they have it or not. Okay, we need to draw a spell. That's a spell. Will it resolve? We can't play around Spell Pierce anyway. Got it. And you can play this and make it a 3-4. And now we have two blockers, which Dive Down can't handle. We're at 14, our opponent's at 16. Do we attack? Simple question. Much more difficult to answer. Who wins the longer game? I should. I should have more powerful cards and more ways to interact than my opponent. And there's a Murmuring Mystic. Let's first see if we can resolve a Drake. It may get countered. If it does, then I can pay two life and go for the Mystic. Okay, Essence Capture buffing the Tempest Jin is unfortunate. Let's see if this works. My lord. Essence Scatter and Essence Capture in the deck? How is that possibly right? I guess the opponent either wants even more Essence Captures, or they don't have all the Essence Captures that they want. Mm, I guess I can hold this to discard to a chart, of course, if I draw it. So, let's say go. Looks like the Staring Match is certainly on. There's the chart, of course. Let's try that now. Okay, this can go. Now we have a dive down. I guess I could send in the Drake and see what happens. Start the race again, but then the opponent hits me, I go to six, then can I turn around and attack for another eight and win? No, not quite. It's also very risky to attack into a Merfolk Trickster. Well, with the dive down, it's a little helpful, but they can also counter the dive down. I think I have to keep waiting. I still have more removal spells in my deck and more ways to cope, as well as a good amount of card draw, so it feels like I should be able to wait. The deck does is having a tendency of not quite giving me what I need, which is scary. The Lightning Strike is something. We're slowly working our way through the early flood of the deck, giving ourselves a chance. Opponent having a look around. Figuring stuff out. If I draw more islands, I'll play them. But if I draw mountains, I'll hold them to discard to chart of courses again. There were two charts down. There's only two left in the whole in the whole build. So all that thinking was for to say go, which I understand that. All right, more land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then there's ten here. So there's only 11 left in 38 cards. That's less than one in three. At some point, maybe the Shuffler will gift us more useful spells. The opponents have six. They often run 20 or 19, so they're feeling it as well. So do I fight over this? 
It's that or I put these in combat and then fight. I wonder what's riskier. I think... Hmm. If I fight about this now, then the opponent has to use a counter spell. Let's give it a shot. If they don't have the counter spell, then the fight d doesn't really get started. And it constrains their mana more if it's a wizard's retort. I wonder if they run things like negate. There's the retort, so that worked. But now the opponent is going to attack, and we have a few ways to fight that attack. And they might have less mana now than they plan to attack with. It depends what tricks and counters they think they have to use. So here's my blocks. And we'll see what the opponent does. They're looking around. Okay, they organize so that's damaging the Jin first. This is eight total damage. It would kill both of them. If I hit pass, then everything dies. Is that what I wish? Well, if this gets countered, it would have to be negate exactly. Let's go for it. All right. So what that did was preserve the drake. Because otherwise, both creatures would have died. Even though it targeted the Jin, it preserved the drake. All right. Let's get busy. If there's another essence capture, at least the opponent doesn't have a target for it right now. Jesus. Two essence scatters and an essence capture. Wow. Wow. All right. So now the opponent has flexed their entrancing melody skills. That's a good draw. That's a pretty lucky draw. And back to two cards in hand versus two cards in hand. Sure. Don't know why they waited till post combat. Maybe they were thinking about saving this or not. Drops off a land. Another lightning strike. Getting close to uh, kill you out of nowhere zone. But I think I only run two of those, to be honest. Alright, there's a trickster. Let's see if the opponent wants to suit this trickster up. Here it comes. Sure, let's see if the opponent's last card is also a curious obsession. But let's do this before attackers in case the last card is a chart, of course. That last card, I think, is a spell pierce, if I'm being honest. A card that does absolutely nothing in all the situations we've been through. So let's kick it on over. Now we drew the 5 5 Terramander off the top. That's what you want to see. Did they draw a Merfolk Trickster, perhaps? Let's go find out. All right, there it is. Just to, I mean, sometimes you just think when the opponent draws and it holds priority, so they click through their turn, but they didn't play it, what could it be? And sometimes the list in the deck is very small. For those of you curious where or how I get these ideas from. All right, that is a lethal looking crackling drake coming through the air. And that was a tough game, but it's over now. I'd, I'd GG that one. That was a really tough one. All right, we've got some Terramanders, Drake Strike. Certainly something I can hang on to. Beyond the draw is a little scary. Island off the top lets me go straight to Terramander time. We'll have to decide whether or not to play the second one based on... Yeah, whether or not our opponent is looking like a goblin chain whirly type. He discarded a mountain. Hmm. I wonder if I'm supposed to play the steam vents or hold up the strike. I think I'll hold up the strike. Opponent might have spectacle cards in the deck. So let's say go. Let's also make them think about whether or not to throw a chain whirler down in the face of this mana. 
So in that case, maybe they wouldn't play it, but if they have a Chain Whirler, I sort of just want them to. So I'm going to strike away this Reveler now, take away Spectacle options, save myself some damage. And they do have the Chain Whirler, which is the best thing to have for that situation. But let's see how they handle the Enigma Drake here. If they let us untap with it, we'll have Negate. And they have a Rekindling Phoenix, which is... Ugh. Ugh. So whether or not to play the other Terramander, hold the strike. I kind of feel like I have to race. If the opponent has a second Chain Whirler, that's really bad. But at this point, there's not a lot I can play around. Phoenix is so good against me. So I'll get this other birdie on the battlefield because it can help me race. And we'll pass the turn over. If the opponent attacks in with Phoenix, we'll Lightning Strike away the Chain Whirler and counterattack. And hope they start bricking. No locks. If it's a second Phoenix, we just... You know, game was just too sad. That's pretty bad, too. To be real with you. That's really bad. So, what gets lightning struck? I think it has to be this, this card, or else it will just kill everything I have. I'd, uh, if I had known that shock was going to be there, I wouldn't have made that play. Alright, close to flipping this Terramander. Let's say go and see what our opponent does. If they attack with a Chain Whirler, we can block with Enigma Drake, counter whatever burn spell they plan to throw at us. But instead, it's just the Phoenix picking us apart. Down to 11. Here's an, another Siege Gang Commander. Holy crap. D the opponent's draw has been rather ideal. In case they have another land, I'm going to play the Shock now. So they can't go land other Goblin. And here the Terramander is ready. Eh? But we are on the D. On the defensive. I think I need to make this a 5-5 as soon as possible. Holding up Negate hasn't done anything yet. And probably won't do anything in the future. Let's opt first. Another shock. Might be able to trade that for the Phoenix, so I'll take it. And let's go 5-5 five, five up in here. And say go. Jesus. I have been savage today. I honestly feel like I've run into some of the worst luck possible. But right there, of course, if we had the negate. That's what we get, I suppose. And you would say, why would I not wait and do that at instant speed? That's why. They have that too. So, no matter what I did, I was a very, very dead mage. Let's shoot away the egg. But that's all we've got. Whew. Tough run with Is It Drakes. If I had more time, I'd probably keep recording, but I don't have more time. And to be fair, I think the games were at least a variety. We played a number of different decks instead of, say, losing to red over and over. We got God Drawn On by White. We faced the worst possible card in Niv. And then the last game against the Black Red Midrange deck. I feel like I can never do that when I play Black Red Midrange. I feel like I'm always like spinning my treasure map and nothing's happening. But that opponent just curved out to five and dumped on us, and it was absolutely brutal. Maybe I played it a little poorly with the Terramander. Maybe I should have held it up. But I think either way, the Terramander was going to die, and our Enigma Drake wasn't going to make it, so there was no way through the game. Still, a few things I could do better. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. This is also going to be a quick reminder that Patreon members get two bonus videos this month in March. So if you would like to subscribe on Patreon, it's only the lowest tier to see those videos is only $2 a month. When you consider that I put out 30 videos a month, $2 isn't that much. So I'd appreciate the support. You can also find me on Twitch and subscribe on Twitch. Um, subscribers on Twitch who pay money for their subscription, $5 a month, also get those videos. Thank you for watching. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. 
Our sponsors are HauntedFlower.com and FlipsideGaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.